Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Vladimir Solohub. While Ukraine is desperately trying to get closer with the EU, the United Kingdom has recently voted to leave the EU. Joining me now to discuss the UK-Ukraine relations after Brexit is the Ambassador of Ukraine to the United Kingdom, Madam Natalia Halibaranko. Madam Ambassador, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you for inviting me. So, um, uh, Madam Halibaranko, you have been appointed um, as the ambassador to uh, Ukraine to the United Kingdom um, in late of uh, 2015. And uh, just literally half a year into your office, uh, the, the big news has come. You know, Britain has uh, voted to, to leave the, the EU. Uh, what is happening between Ukraine and the United Kingdom right now? Is Ukraine on the agenda in the United Kingdom at all, given all the problems with you, which the UK is facing right now? Uh, you know, Vladimir, the ex actually Brexit came as a big surprise. And uh, the most funny thing is uh, that it came as a surprise to both parties. Because their leave campaign, uh, they were not expecting their victory, so it's like it was a sensation uh, for the United Kingdom. And that's why the British government is now like having a period of reflection, so to say. They're trying to liberate the exact policy how to withdraw from the European Union, but still they're looking at the most appropriate shape of the relations for the future. And uh, when I was talking to some people in the British government, in the parliament, even to the drivers in the cabs, uh, all of them are really convinced that they would be capable to liberate a very good shape of relations. Uh, something even more than Norway or Switzerland uh, has with the, uh, with the European Union. So we will see. I think our agenda with the UK should be the same one. I proceed from the fact that uh, the UK uh, will be uh, withdrawing from the European U Union, but not from Europe. So I expect that uh, in the format of G7, uh, Security Council, UN, and uh, in our bilateral relations, the UK will be still playing a major part. So my task is to keep uh, Ukraine on the agenda, on the radar, so to say, of the United Kingdom now. Madam Ambassador, how do you do that? How do you make sure that Ukraine remains on the agenda of the United Kingdom, given all the internal problems in the UK, and also given the fact that Britain is not part of the Normandy format talks? No, on one side, like my, my job is uh, a bit simpler. Uh, in, the, in London, because also the British society, not only the parliament or the government, uh, they were from the very beginning, from the very beginning of annexation of Crimea and then uh, the war uh, in Donbass, they were on our side, standing very for, firm for Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity. So this is the very country where actually people, they are not only talking about values, but they are really defending and trying to pursue values in their like everyday life. So the good thing was when uh, new appointed Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson made clear that uh, the policy towards supporting Ukraine will stay as it is, irrelevant of whether the Brexit will be implemented like started this year or, or um, uh, already next year. And the second uh, thing, I, uh, what I try to do is, of course, to use my personal contacts. So talking to people, talking to students, uh, talking to experts, um, actually also uh, presenting my view in different think tanks in the United Kingdom. I think this is the, the best approach. And just recently, Ukraine was again in the focus of all mass media in the United Kingdom because of the developments in Crimea. And my perception was that people, they are really absolutely aware of what is going on in Ukraine. There is no misperception or no, no illusions about what Russia is doing in Donbass. And that is a really good thing. Russia has a very big influence in the United Kingdom. Uh, there are a lot of Russians living in London alone. Uh, Russia has English language TV channels in the United Kingdom. Russian propaganda is very strong in the United Kingdom. How do you fight it? You know, we, I mean, not only me, but ambassadors of Ukraine also abroad. I think that our strength is that we are not actually doing counter propaganda. Because this is, I think, a very bad approach. We are not creating any new uh, like reality as, Russia, as Russia, Russia does. So our point is to tell the truth. And when I was speaking about, for example, about developments in Crimea, I said very frankly to all people and all journalists that I will be not presenting like our vision of what is going on in Crimea. Let's investigate together. So we are absolutely open. 
as it was like, for example, with the crash of MH17. Russia was trying to depict different theories that Ukraine actually crashed the Malaysian airplane, but we created an investigation group and it confirmed that it was, uh, the attack was made by, by Russian red separatists, just like in this case. So I think that our transparency and our, um, our right to tell the truth, this is the best way to tackle Russian propaganda. However, you're absolutely right. They are really influential and uh, their tactics actually in the United Kingdom is a bit different. So they are trying to use more cultural different ties, different, different cultural events to present like Russian history, Rus Russian heritage, Russian literature, which is of course uh, what, what, what heritage, no, no doubt about that. But they're trying to depict themselves as really Europeans, like we're sharing the same history, look at our uh, big history, our literature, our art and so on. But what about values? Is Russia trying to convince the Europeans that they're also sharing the same values? Because clearly this is not the case. That, that, that's why I, I mentioned this like cultural approach. Because when you are invading your, na your neighbor, it's like it cannot be any illusions about what values are you, are you following really. Or for example, in the case of Litvinenko, which was, was investigated in the United Kingdom and many, many cases like that. So I think that their opportunity is like not to focus on some political matters but to use this like cultural channel actually to touch the heads of, of, of Brits. Um, it's, uh, some, some experts say that um, uh, Ukraine um, is, is, is going off the radar of the European community uh, and also um, in, in the British community as well. And just uh, recently when we were in, in, in London in, in January, we investigated a story when Oxford University Press printed a school geography book with Crimea depicted as part of Russia. Do you see this tendency continuing that the, 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 the matter of illegal annexation of Crimea has faded away and that the, the, the Ukraine is no longer visible on the, on the, uh, British, in the British society? Uh, I think that we, we can be really like frank at that and admitting that the European Union is overwhelmed with many, many problems. Migrants, Syria, parliamentary elections in, in France, uh, elections in Germany, Brexit, and so on. So of course people are trying like, to, to focus on their internal agenda and inevitably uh, issues like Crimea is going something like, you know, as a de facto closed file. But you mentioned a very good about, uh, case about Oxford Dictionary and uh, together with our Ukrainian community uh, in, in London, we succeeded actually in, in, uh, in, in the fact that they republished a new dictionary and they just put a relevant uh, right um, map of, of Crimea. But just recently I had the same example, for example, I was uh, giving an interview and before my interview there was a uh, special uh, um, um, reporter was speaking about, about Ukraine and they show it the map with, where Crimea was marked as a part of the Russian territory. And thanks to actually Ukrainian community and Ukrainians here who were watching my interview, they like made a really an information campaign and we also made an appeal to the channel just to, to change the map to the correct one and, and, and then just they, they removed this piece of information. But again, we should be really careful in trying to look very attentively at all these cases and to, to stick to the policy that uh, annexation of Crimea is illegal. Madam Hanebanker, if you could go back to the issue of uh, the European Union and uh, Brexit, now that the uh, United Kingdom is trying to find a way of a proper um, exit from the, from the European Union, how easy or how difficult it is for you to advocate for closer connection, for closer ties between Ukraine and the EU with the United Kingdom? Uh, I think it's like too premature if to be realistic to say something like the, the policy changed or whether it doesn't change because uh, Theresa May is only one month old uh, uh, Prime Minister and Boris Johnson even, uh, even, even less. So I think that the autumn and actually also winter will show how, how the policy will be uh, transforming in the United Kingdom but still even despite the Brexit, I think that some major issues and Ukraine among them, they would be still in the focus of the United Kingdom. Because this country, they are not acting, you know, as a local player. They see uh, themselves as a 
uh, international player tackling together with the United States, with the European Union, major international problems. So I think that this UK-Ukraine alliance will, will stay alive. And of course, we will need them definitely for uh, prolonging sanctions. So I think that uh, in this uh, like future, future months, that would be crucial for us to be acting together. Do you see the risk, again, that the new government will be more Russia-friendly, so to say, and will be inclining towards lifting sanctions from Russia? You know, I don't think so, because even uh, despite the fact that Theresa May was not actually engaged in the foreign affairs uh, beforehand, but she was a minister for internal affairs, and she was really tough on Russia, for example, with the case of uh, killing of Mr. murder of Mr. Litvinenko. And she was uh, presented the case in the parliament, and again, she was really tough about what Russia did and uh, uh, what can be the response of the UK government towards Russia. So I think that we, we shouldn't be making a tragedy at this point and also give our partners in the UK just some time uh, to think and, and look about their perspectives. Because again, that would be a major challenge for Brits just like in the forthcoming two, three years. Well, and so while we see how things develop in this matter, Madam Ambassador, many thanks for finding the time to come and talk to us. We were discussing the Ukraine-UK relations in light of the new realities, in light of Brexit, with the Ambassador of Ukraine to the United Kingdom, Madam Natalia Halibarenko. I'm Vladimir Solohub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.